regarding people who need money to start up a business which is much more than a personal saving or earnings of an individual interest is haram from any of the sources setting up a factory or any other business needs a certain amount which is almost impossible to earn how can a person get finance in such situation But the OAS has asked a question that if someone wants to set up a business and it requires certain finance to start his business and we know it's haram for Muslims to take loan from a conventional bank which deals in riba, which deals in interest. So what are the various options to get this initial finance? <clears throat> but naturally taking loan from a conventional bank which involves riba it is a major sin, it is haram. What are the various options that we have? One option you have is you can approach an Islamic bank and you can ask for the finance. An Islamic bank have various ways how they can finance you, either as a murhaba or a mudariba or as a musharika. For business, as you mentioned, the best would be a musharika, that means sharing of the profit. But unfortunately, most of the Islamic banks, their finance in musharika is a very small percentage. Mainly they deal in the kosparas, that is the mudariba or a marhaba, but rarely do they deal in musharika. But if you have a collateral, or if you have certain things which can give a security to the bank, then there are chances that you can get an Islamic finance from an Islamic bank. Normally, when you want to start a business, there are broadly four ways how a money can be arranged from an outside source if you don't have money. Number one is taking a loan from a bank by paying an interest from a conventional bank, which you know is haram. The alternative is that you can take from Islamic bank and do a profit sharing, which is permitted. When you take a loan from a bank, conventional bank, the profit that you get normally, you share a very small percentage with the conventional bank because the interest rate, you know, depending upon the country, maybe 8%, maybe 6%, maybe 5%, maybe 3%, maybe very low. And because of COVID-19 now, the LIBOR rate is very less. LIBOR is London Interbank Offered Rate. And this week's rate is 0.38. One year back, it was 2.02%. But now the annual LIBOR rate is only 0.38 because of the financial crisis that we are in. So when you take from a conventional bank, whatever profit you make, you give a very small percentage. The percentage that the bank is charging is very less as compared to the profit you take. This is the one way of arranging finance, but naturally conventional bank is haram for the Muslims. However, we can go to an Islamic bank. The second option is by arranging for a bond. In a conventional bond, in a conventional bank it is called as bond which is again haram, it's a fixed amount that you promise to the people who have purchased your bond, even that is riba, it's haram. The Islamic alternative for a bond is a sukuk, where you launch a project, you launch a sukuk, and people can buy, instead of buying bonds, they buy a sukuk, and this sukuk is the equivalent of a bond, but in sukuk it is halal, because in sukuk, you are dealing in an Islamic way. What happens in a sukuk is difficult to explain everything. I'll just give you in brief so that a layman can understand, but it will not be exactly what I'm saying. For example, if you want certain amount of finance, uh, maybe $100,000 and, and you don't have, so what you do, maybe you can put your house or your villa as a collateral, whether it be half a million dollar or one million dollar. And you give it as a collateral 
or in short you can say that you have converted the ownership to a third party and then you are staying in your own villa in your own bungalow by paying rent so he buys your bungalow maybe for a million dollar and then he is charging you rent maybe about fifty thousand dollars hundred thousand dollars a year depending upon your contract so when he's buying your villa and you are using the villa that you owned but now it is owned by somebody else you can pay rent so rent is permitted it's a fixed amount but it's permitted it's not riba so this is the alternative that you have for a sukku i've just given you in a very layman's terminology but natural there are various islamic aspects that have to be looked into it it should not break any of the rules of the islamic sharia so the second option in the conventional banking it is bond in the islamic sharia it is sukuk the third in the sukuk is the second best where you may have to give a little bit more than the normal interest that you give in the bank and uh, it is a little bit more the sukuk or the bond is a little bit more than a conventional bank the interest that they charge the third option is an IPO or a uh, initial public offer where if you're launching a company you tell to the public or launching a company you can buy shares of the company and each person who buys a share of the company he gets a percentage of the profit so this is called as IPO where the public becomes a shareholder you yourself can invest you may be the major shareholder so you can control the functioning of the of the company but public takes part and whatever profit is there you share it but you because you are managing it you can charge an amount for your managing fees and that's what your extra profit is the last is profit sharing with the partner when you share with the profit uh, when you ask a profit to uh, when you sorry when you ask a third person to become a partner in your company he buys the share depending whether he buys 50 50 both invest 50 percent then they share in the profit 50 percent if you are going to handle the affairs of the company you can take a sweat equity and you can say that fine i am managing the company so i'll take additional 10 percent of the profit or i'll take 20 percent of the profit so what our profit the company makes you take 10 or 20 percent whatever we decided the balance you share on the proportion that you and your partner have invested so if both have invested 50 50 percent and you say that i'm going to charge 20 percent for managing the company so the first 20 percent goes to you the balance 30 percent is shared 50 percent between you and 50 percent between your partner so your partner gets 50 percent of 80 percent that is 40 percent you get 20 plus 40 percent you get 60 percent so the last is sharing as a partner or both the partners can take equal part in managing the company so both get equal sweat equity so both have invested 50 50 percent and both are involved in managing the company 50 50 percent so the net profit is also shared 50 50 between both the partners now coming to your basic question that if you don't have the finance how can you take finance so i gave you the various option the first option is the least amount of your profit goes to a conventional bank or to an Islamic bank. But here you have to realize that if your business goes in loss, then you are the one who suffers. Because the bank will not, a conventional bank will not give you a loan unless it has taken some guarantee. So if you go a loss in the business, then whatever asset that you have given as a collateral to the conventional bank or whatever guarantee you have given, they'll have to pay for the loss. So the profit you share is a very small percentage, but the loss totally comes on to you. In the second case, where you're having a bond or where you're having a sukuk, there you're already given a collateral. So, but naturally, your collateral will get depleted. In this also, the profit of sharing is less, a little bit more than a conventional bank. But the loss is completely borne by you. In the third scenario, when you're launching an IPO, the loss is borne by all the shareholders. And if you have launched a public issue, where majority of the shares are by the public, maybe 60%, 70%, 80%,
So the loss is shared equally by you as well as the public. If you have a private partner investing in your business, then you and your partner share the losses and share the profit. The last scenario is the best in terms of if you go in a loss, both by equal loss. But if you go in a profit, both share the profit. So the last, which is the partnership, is the best. It is the middle path where if you have a profit, you share the profit also equally. But if you have a loss, you share the loss equally. That is the safest. But the profit you make also has to be shared equally. There are the various options you have. Now, you as an individual, if you cannot go to a conventional bank or Islamic bank, the option remaining for you is that you approach some of your friends or some of your family members who have faith in you that whatever business you're going to start, they have faith in you that you are smart. You can give the proposal to your friends or to your family members who have the finance and then they can be a partner in your business. As I mentioned earlier that if you don't have any finance at all, then you can ask your friend to finance completely. And depending upon the capacity your friends have, you have to alter the business accordingly. And you can take a sweat equity. You can say that I'm managing the business, so if the amount they've invested is huge, but naturally the percentage of the profit of yours will be very less. Maybe 5%, maybe 10% as a sweat equity. If the amount invested is moderate, then your percentage of managing can be a little bit more, 15%, 20%. If they have invested a very small amount and the profit per se is very minimal and your time involved is a lot, then you can take 30%, 40% of the profit as a sweat equity. If you have some money which you can spare from your own side in investing, you too can invest and your friend can invest maybe 50-50, or maybe you invest 25, we invest 75 percent. You take your sweat equity, you take your sweat equity first for managing the company, and the balance you share according to the percentage you have given or your friend has given. And but you have to always see to it that whenever you have a business proposal, see to it that it is Sharia compliant. And uh, that reminds me the person who was one of the best in the world as far as Islamic finance was concerned, who has expired recently. His name is Dr. Hussein Hamid Hassan. Unfortunately, five weeks ago, on the 19th of August, he expired and he was very close to me. He was called as the father of Islamic finance or the father of Islamic bank. His age was more than 80 when he expired. He's an Egyptian and he did his PhD in Islamic finance from Cairo in 1965. And he has traveled in different parts of the world. He's also the founder of the Islamic University in Islamabad in Pakistan, where he spent several years, more than a decade, 15 to 19 years. And he set up the university. And later on, he shifted to Dubai and he was the chairman of the Sharia board of more than 25 different financial institutes worldwide. And he was an expert in giving the Islamic solution for the alternative of the conventional, fin the conventional finance. Because the conventional banking is haram, Dr. Hussein, Hamid Hussein, Dr. Hussein Hamad Hassan, mashallah, was a brilliant personality, very intelligent, and he thought to it that he gave the alternative what was there in the normal finance, but thought to it that he did not break any of the Islamic rules. And mashallah, I have spent several hours with him several times, and whatever I've learned about Islamic finance is spending time with Dr. Hussein Hamad Hassan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him Janet for those. And there was a question asked to me about, about three months back on this live QA session, asked Dr. Zakir. And I spoke about that the scholars today are very few. And I named, I named hardly less than 10 scholars that I named. There are very few scholars living in the world, maybe a few hundred. I only named 10. And 
It is sad to know that out of these less than 10 which I named, two have expired and we pray that they have gone to Jannatul Firdos. The first one was Sheikh Dr. Professor Muhammad asked me where uh, Dr. Sheikh Muhammad Zia Rahman asked me who was the head of the Hadith Department of Islamic University of Medina. He expired on the day of Arafah on the 30th of July 2020 and the other personality was Dr. Hussain Hamid Hassan, who was known as the father of Islamic finance, the father of Islamic banking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant both of them Janita Firdos and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see to it that gives the Ummah more scholars like them.